All right, everybody, this is Aaron Brightman. A few minutes after Rutgers uh, gets redemption against Ohio State. Uh, I don't know. I hate to, like, you know, say every game just feels crazy. But, I mean, this was just uh, – what a game. What a game. Uh, heart stopper for sure. 22 lead changes in the game. Uh, goes to overtime. Uh, you know, Rutgers starts down 15-4. Uh, down, down, uh, to 4. Uh, neither team scored in the first four minutes of the game. So you knew, um, obviously defensively, you know, Rutgers brought it, uh, offensively. They, you know, they didn't look lost. They had good shots. They were able to generate good offensive looks. They weren't able to hit shots. They weren't able to make, uh, shots. And, uh, a lot of people struggle from the floor tonight. Um, but a lot of great performances as well. And at the end of the day, this team gutted it out, and they, they, they know how to win. This team knows how to close out games, and uh, it's, you know, they're a veteran team. I mean, they they should. Uh, but let's talk about coaching for a minute because I thought that a key part of the game, um, I it wasn't the turning point, but Steve Peichel picking up the technical foul uh, after right after halftime. is like a minute, minute and a half in. Uh, on uh, what looked like a missed call on McConnell on the defensive end, uh, I thought was just uh, perfectly timed. Uh, and, you know, for a coach that never gets technicals, never loses his cool, uh, you know, I, I can always tell when he's holding emotion back in his face uh, to see him, you know, kind of lose it and, uh, and really go after the refs. I thought, you know, I don't know if it was necessarily uh, premeditated or, you know, but I, I could see that they sensed as a coaching staff that that needed to happen at some point. And he picked the perfect spot for it to happen. You do it early second half. It's not a killer. It's not going to decide the outcome of the game if, you know, you pick it up with three minutes to go. Uh, so I thought it was at the perfect time. And it really got Rutgers going. It woke them up a little bit, uh, gave them... I thought a little more pep in the step, uh, you know, how to hit the free throws, but then McConnell stole it. Uh, I think it was Mag who hit the shot and then Cam got, uh, got the call on the three pointer for three free throws and went into the line and made all three. So, uh, it was a, you know, I, I think it, it, I don't want to say it influenced how the refs call the rest of the game, but it certainly impacted it. I think in terms of, just the flow of the game, you know, Rutgers got 27 free throw attempts. Ohio State had 12. Uh, Ohio State was 10 of 12. Rutgers 20 of 27. A little bit worse than they've been, but 20 of 24. How many fouls? There were 22 fouls in Ohio State, 16 on Rutgers. So it wasn't like it was so one-sided, but, um, you know, key fouls. Uh, uh, McNeil, who had three threes for Ohio State, fouled out. Zed Key had four fouls. You know, Spencer and Cliff had three. Uh, Cliff was in foul trouble, but I, I thought Cliff did an amazing job uh in this game and also down the stretch uh staying out of foul trouble but also tremendous defense but just one and more well yeah let's just talk about cliff so you know i thought his defense was tremendous tonight i thought you know he looked for more spots offensively they took the lead late in regulation with that classic pick and roll with mulcahy and him and him getting the dunk uh you know i thought he let's see he was four of 11 not a great shooting night but hey he made his first six free throws uh when Rutgers went or oh, i believe four minutes without a field goal he had six free throws that was absolutely huge in the game um and i thought he just stood his ground you know he he uh played great defense on key i thought down the stretch he rebounded what he had 11 rebounds uh and i just thought that um you know he he looked he he's he's I he's, he's making strides defensively. I know people want to see you know him dominate offensively. Uh, you know he finished with 14, 14, 11, six blocks. So I mean he made his presence known. He gave Rutgers a lot tonight. He's been struggling. He was averaging less than six points a game his last three games. He stepped up in a big way. I thought you know Zed Key got the best of him in the first matchup. Obviously Zed Key is battling a shoulder injury. But Zeki is like a very, very good offensive player. Uh, he's, I mean, he's a very good player overall. But uh, Cl Cliff stepped up tonight and, and made some big plays. Uh, and then, you know, Mo Watmag, what can you say? I mean, on a night that I people, I'm surprised no one's tweeted at me yet that I jinxed Andre Hyatt. I wrote about uh, how he's arguably the best sixth man in the Big Ten uh, up to this point. You know, he had scored eight or more points in nine games uh, off the bench. Uh, and he had a goose egg tonight. He did not have his best performance, uh, 0 for 4 in 18 minutes. Uh, but on a night that he struggles, Mowat Mag played so huge. 
He hit a lot of big shots in this game. None bigger than the corner three with the shot clock winding down. Rutgers up one. Seconds remaining in the game. And Mag hits it, knocks it down. He, had, he was two of three from uh, three tonight. Five of six from the floor. 15 points, eight rebounds, a block. Uh, just, you know, he had four offensive rebounds. So did Cliff. Um, he was huge. He was huge. He played within himself. He played tremendous defense. You know, he, he uh, made one mistake late against Suing. Where he let he had a great defensive stop and they left his feet. Suing made the jumper. He didn't do that again. He held Suing to three of ten from the floor. He played great defense. He gives his team an edge uh, on the boards uh, and defensively. And I know you know some people have been critical of a shot selection. Listen, the threes he took tonight were were within the flow of the offense. If he takes them within the flow of the offense, I have no problem doing that. Uh, he's not forcing things and uh, he's taking what's given. You know, and he he's. Listen, he could score around the rim. He had that 12-foot jumper or 10-foot jumper at one point. Uh, you know, he could score off offensive rebounds. He brings it defensively. Just he, he listen, this is what winning teams do, right? When 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 other players have off nights, when key players have off nights, other guys step up. And Mag picked up Hyatt tonight in a big way to get them that production they needed out of the four to win the game. And he hit the shot, the biggest shot of the game. So uh, that, that was just monster. You know, Cam Spencer uh, hit, missed a few opportunities to win the game. But, I mean, look at his line. 21 points. Uh, he was just 5 of 13 from the field, 2 of 7 from threes. You know, he had a couple in and outs. But he was 9-11 from the free throw line. And he, he only had one miss going into the season, coming into tonight. But uh, one was when the game was over. Uh, at any rate, 9 of 11, still 81%. <laughs> So, uh, you know, 21 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists, 4 steals, plus 13 uh, in the game. Second best on the team, uh, led by Mawat Mag, plus 17. They were plus 17 when he was on the floor tonight. 33 minutes out of 45 possible. Uh, you know, uh, Cam gave him 37 minutes. But look at McConnell, 43 minutes, was plus 6. He had 10 points, 7 boards, 4 assists, uh, and 2 steals. He did take a couple of bad shots. He took a bad three down the end. Uh, but this kid's a warrior, you know, and he makes plays. He, I thought defensively he made some really big plays tonight. Uh, and, uh, you know, he 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 gave them the production they needed. Uh, he had clips of four guys who scored uh, double figures. You know, Mulcahy uh, struggled, but he had a huge three down the stretch. He did have four assists. I thought a real key was all five starters. Each of them only had one turnover. So in the game, Rutgers only had 10 uh they're they're winning games by limiting turnovers you know 10 a game is doable uh Ohio State had 13 points off for turnovers uh was about even I believe uh points off for turnovers uh, actually Ohio State had the better of them 19 to 14 uh despite Rutgers having three less you know Ohio State I'll rebounded them by two uh rebounded by one on the offensive glass I was even on second chance points 16 16 uh points in the paint was even Fast break points, Ohio State 13 to 9. I mean, Ohio State, you know, eked out a lot of categories tonight. Both teams shot 34%. Uh, Ohio State shot 38% from three, which is what they were coming into the game uh, for the season. It was worse than what they've been shooting in the Big Ten play. They were 8 of 21. Rutgers just 6 of 24. But again, the free throws, uh, plus 10 free throws made by Rutgers. Ohio State was 10 of 12. Rutgers 20 of 27. Again, 74%. You're going to win doing that. You know, less than the 80 they've been shooting the last eight games, but still 74% for the season. They came through. That's huge. They, and, and a lot of them were, they hit free throws in the second half when they weren't making shots. And that really kept them in the game. And then they were able to make some big shots down the stretch. So that was huge. And then 16 assists on 21 makes. Always a great sign. That's really, you know, really efficient offense for sure. Uh, and just going back to Peichel. So now he's beaten Chris Holtman two of the last three. He's beaten Matt Painter five of the last six. He's beaten Tom Izzo two in a row. Uh, it's time for, you know, the discussion in the league. I mean, nationally, they need, Steve Peichel is one of the best coaches in the Big Ten. And people that follow the Big Ten and know what they're talking about know that already. But I don't think there's enough talk, you know, and maybe this is the season that, you know, that, that will break through. Uh, certainly if they win the big 10, uh, he's going to win coach of the year. I mean, I don't know how he couldn't, um, but the job he's done so far, I think has just been phenomenal. This team now 13 and five, five and two in the big 10, half a game out of first place. Purdue plays Michigan state tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow day, uh, Monday holiday, uh, uh, Purdue's in first place at five and one 
Michigan State's looming at four and two. If Michigan State wins that game, we have a three-way tie for first heading to East Lansing on Thursday to face Michigan State. Uh, th this is getting fun, you know. And this was two quad one wins this week. Ohio State is now uh, the most satisfying thing about the the revenge game, the redemption game, uh, the payback game is that this is Ohio State's fourth loss in a row. So they were extremely desperate coming in. And this, you know, this, this is not a death blow, but this this really knocks them back in the Big Ten standings uh, for a team that, you know, analytically has been the second best team in the Big Ten all season. Uh, a lot of people thought they had the potential to win. Uh, you know, Sensabaugh is an NBA lottery pick, no doubt. Uh, what did he have tonight? He had 20. They did make him work for it. Uh, 20 and 11. Um, but you know, uh, what they hold, uh, suing was a big deal holding him to seven. Uh, he only had 11, four of 11 from the floor. I believe he had eight in the first half or something. So he was really limited down the stretch, uh, which was huge. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I thought that, let's see, they, they shot 25% in overtime. Uh, Rutgers was three of seven. Um, but just, uh, absolutely huge. Uh, victory uh, and burying Ohio State like this is just really satisfying. I think they'll still stay a quad one win. They were no, number 21 in the net coming in. So they have to stay in the top 30 for this to be a quad one win. I think that it will. Uh, this is not a bad loss for Ohio State. Rutgers is 14 uh, or 13 in the net. So this is just another quad one win, third uh, on the season. Uh, Indiana is actually only two, two spots out, I think, for it to be a quad one win again. Again, I don't know if that's going to, you know, I, I, I don't think they're going to last a Q1, even if they do, you know, enter it. Uh, but this is, you know, you got to protect your home court. So I was really nervous about this game. Uh, you have losses to Seton Hall in Iowa. Um, what I think is different about Ohio State, there were tremendous offensive team coming in third nationally coming into the game. Offensive efficiency, Rutgers held them to 64 points in an overtime session, 34% shooting. The key for me was that, you know, Iowa is uh, system driven. Uh, they have great shooters uh, and they have a great system. And Rutgers, you know, they got beat. They got beat by Iowa, uh, you know, executing that system flawlessly. Ohio State, you know, has really talented offensive players, Sensabaugh uh, and Key, obviously. Uh, but they're more, you know, individually driven. And Rutgers was, although they combined for 31 points, uh you know, nobody else really got there. No, nobody else. Well, yeah, yeah. McNeil had three threes, but they really limited the production from everyone else. And, um, you know, Ohio State isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to be able to manhandle uh, Rutgers. I mean, Rutgers held them in, in the 60s twice. I don't know what they're averaging. I believe it's close to 80. Like I said, third. They were, they were first nationally in offensive efficiency coming into this week. Then they were third coming into this game. So stellar, stellar defensive performance from Rutgers tonight, uh, where it needed to be, had to protect that home court. They, they, they came through in the clutch. Uh, they just, this team's nails, you know, I mean, they, they really just stick together. Uh, they showed their experience and, and they don't fold. And, you know, Cam made some big, big plays down the stretch. That jumper, uh, I don't know what he was doing, but it was like, it, it was a really tough make and he made it. Uh, and, and they just, uh, you know, they're unselfish. I mean, for Mulcahy to find Mag in the corner like that with the shot clock running out, Mulcahy, you know, he, he deferred. And uh, people sometimes get upset he defers too much. But I thought in that case, it was the perfect extra pass. Mag was wide open, you know, and you got to give it to him in the corner. Uh, shot clock running down. Mulcahy would have had to force it. It was a great play, you know, and I think Mulcahy doesn't get enough credit sometimes for you know, it's just assumed he's going to have five to seven assists and, you know, he, he's the point guard, but he's, he's, uh, he was very, he made, he, this team makes the right decisions in the right spots. When they need to make a big play, they make the right decisions. And that, that, that's what winning teams do. And that's what this team is. They're a winning team, 13 and five, five and two, you know, they're top 20, uh, Ken Palm and net. They might be knocking on the top 10 door after today. I know people are going to be like, are they going to be ranked tomorrow? Are they going to be ranked tomorrow in the AP poll? You know, I, listen, I don't care about the AP poll. It's no disrespect to writers. Uh, I love, you know, the Rutgers writers that do vote in it. Jerry Carino, Brian Vaseca. Uh, You know, I, I respect all the writers that vote in that poll. I respect all the coaches that vote in the coaches poll. It doesn't mean anything. Yes, I, perception, bragging rights, sure. You know, I don't want to uh, take that away from Rutgers fans. I do think they'll be ranked. But at the end of the day, what their net is, what their Ken Palm is, and what their standing is in the Big Ten, that's what matters. And 
Those are all really, really, really good right now. So reason for optimism, for sure. You know, it's just the type of, I mean, the, the line between winning and losing in this league is so fine. Every win, the ceiling is going to raise. Every loss, you're going to have to make up for it in another way. And getting this win uh, today, getting this 2-0 and week after the Iowa game, to not let it be a skid uh, is just huge. It shows the maturity and leadership of this team. And, and it's, um, you know, it just, it, it, they're now, four, they've won four or five in 2023. I thought they could go four and one in this stretch and they did. Uh, and it's just, it, it just sets up, again, it just raises expectations, raises the ceiling and sets them up for bigger and bigger games down the stretch. And this team is ready for it, you know, and they proved today again, that they're an elite defensive team. If there was any doubt, if there was any wavering, you know, after the Iowa game, they shut Ohio State down and they did just enough on offense. And that's that's what they have to do. And again, it goes back to making free throws. They made enough free throws to win this game. You know, they shot 34%, but when you shoot 75% from the line, you make 20 free throws, you get to the line. I thought they did a great job of getting to the line. I thought they, they you know, they, they utilized getting Cam Spencer to the line today like they hadn't coming in uh, all season. You know, down the stretch when they were in the bonus, he drove to the basket, he drew fouls, he got to the line. It's automatic. Uh, again, can't say enough about Cliff coming through. Can't say enough about Mag coming through. Uh, again, it's got to be different guys each night, you know, and uh, that's what's happening. I'm probably forgetting something I wanted to say. Uh, but overall, you know, just a, a huge win for this team, a huge win for this program. And uh, Steve Peichel, you know, that, 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 that technical, uh, you, you never want to give the team free shots. But I thought, based on the circumstances, based on what happened in this first game, based on what's been happening with Rutgers, with the officiating, based on what happened against Northwestern in the second half, you know, uh, I, I really think it was a stroke of genius in terms of him doing that in that spot. And I think it gave this team a big lift uh, and helped carry them to victory. You get 22 lead changes. I know my stomach's shot. I don't know if I can eat for a while. I don't know if you can either. Uh, but great, uh, great win on a, a Sunday, a three day weekend, holiday weekend. And, uh, thanks again for watching this, uh, check out all my content at the dot and, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Twitter, all that. I don't know. I'm exasperated. Time to go right and, uh, go Rutgers.